What's all this insanity is going on this morning? Hey, it's a big deal, yeah. man. It's huge. It's so huge, I can't even tell you about it. And of course, this is why we're here. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> I mean, I was shocked what I found. Well, I hadn't looked at those photos for, let's say, 40 years. Um, and then we started archiving. We started looking on the internet for photographs. Um, and we found a few there. And then we found a guy in uh, San Diego who had some, collected Rory Storm stuff. So he gave me a few. And then I went through my stuff and found I had more of that than I had. And then we found my mother's box, who was like a hoarder, who knew? I mean, I just, when she died, I just took the boxes and put them in our attic here. I didn't really look at them. I'd never opened them, uh, but we got them out. I thought, well, let's have a look. And she actually had all that early stuff. She had the letter from Rory. She had the Brian Epstein uh, thing to tell us. Look sharp, lads, it's a big gig. <laughs> and stuff like that. So the first half of the book is, uh, we have to thank her, really, because she collected all that. And as I say in the book, uh, you know, she loved every minute of my life. And, you know, bits from Germany, I mean, stuff you'd have in your pockets. Maybe she was going through my pockets, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> she'd put it all in this box, you know. And now, this year, it became part of all of this. Photographs are magic things because they let you see the world through someone else's eyes um, and, they, and they broaden your horizons and, um, and musicians uh, make good photographers because they go to a lot of interesting places and they do a lot of cool stuff and so the, the you know, uh, especially if you're a Beatle. I want you here to have a So it is, it's a look at, at the Beatles from the inside, but it's also the life of, of Richard Starkey, you know, from a from very, very young age up until the present. And, and that's, that's quite amazing. Though it's called Photographs Ringo, most of them are mine, but there are some that are just on my camera that of course I couldn't take. And, and there are some that I just found, and I thought they helped the story move along. We found incredible stuff from uh, when I was in Germany, I must have brought back, or it was in my pocket, or in my case, and she'd put them in a little tin. There's the Kaiser Keller Club. This is where the first club I played at was, was over here, <laughs> with Rory Storm and the Hurricane. There used to be a big stage down the bottom there, where it's all bonquettes now. I mean, of course everything's changed, but this is where we played. Look at this. Hello, Rory Storm and those other people. And we're from England, Liverpool. We just started finding real stuff in archive, and then uh, Nick Roylands, you know, uh, from Genesis Publications, we called him because he did the postcards book. So we sat around and put a selection of photos and bits together. Ringo and Barbara were organizing their archives, and I believe they found um, a lot of material that they, they didn't know they had. And now you can see in over 300 pages, there's um, hundreds of these fantastic images, and each one is like a little beautiful window into um, this extraordinary life's work. So, um, and, and they just look fantastic reproduced in print. I had TB in 1953, and I went in hospital, and I had my 14th birthday in hospital. Anyway, while I was there, to keep us entertained, because a lot of us stayed in bed a long time, this woman came, and she had a like a big board with yellow, red, and green marks on it. And if she hit the yellow, 
you did the tambourine. It was all percussive. You hit the red, you did the drum. Anyway, I got a drum for the first time. And then I wouldn't be in the band unless I got a drum after that. Anyway, from that on, it was like a magical moment. I only wanted to play drums. It was really far out how strong that urge was. I was a sailor first, I sailed the sea. Then I got a job in a factory. Played Buckland's camp with my friend Rory. It was good for him, it was great for me. Liverpool, I left you Said goodbye to Madrid Street I always followed my heart And I never missed a beat Destiny was calling I just couldn't stick around Liverpool but I never let you down Went to Hamburg The red lights were on With George and Paul And my friend John We rocked all night We all looked up We didn't have much But we had enough when I was young and I discovered the Beatles, one of the things that I loved about them so much was that each one of them had such distinct personalities that, you know, like George made you want to play guitar and John made you want to scream, you know, and Paul made you want to play everything and, you know, but Ringo, really it was the first time that I'd listened to music and, and really focused on the drummer, not only because of the way he played, but because of his personality. Every drummer, every other drummer that I love, loves Ringo. I've never, there's never been a drummer that inspired me or that I liked the way they played, that if, the converse, if I met them, they didn't go off on Ringo. I mean, that's never happened. And in fact, that's also true of, of all the musicians I know. I mean, there are people that you will talk to who will say, yeah, I never got into Ringo. And I don't say this to be funny. That's the last thing they ever say to me. <laughs> it's just because there's nothing, there's no, there's no more, there's nothing left to go into, you know? Say goodbye to Admiral Grove. I always followed my heart, so I took it on. But the first time I, I sort of really met him and, and took photos of him was uh, the, the first year they had the All-Star Band. And someone wanted me to come down and shoot photos of each band member for a tour book or something. And so I went down there to the rehearsal and uh, I said to Ringo, now, do you mind if I jump up on stage while you're rehearsing because I need to get a good portrait of everybody? He said, look, I'm the drummer, you're the photographer. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Wow, that's, you know, I've always remembered that phrase, you know, it was so straightforward and direct, you know, and to the point. But now we have to revise that because now he's the drummer and he's the photographer. <laughs> I enjoy taking pictures and, you know, I've, I've got a lot of shots I've taken of the boys that only I've taken. And there's also, I think it's in the book, there's Dezo Hoffman who took a lot of pictures of the Beatles, photographer and Bob Freeman, but I've got photos of them. You know, we always had like a real photographer, but I just love taking pictures, I mean, you know, and I still do. And as it went on, I found all those prism lenses. I used to like to, you know, and if you look at uh, the Magical Mystery Tour, the George song, uh, Blue Jay Way, I've just put crazy lenses on. And then we did another piece in the living room where I projected onto him. Yeah, I've always, it's always been of interest to me. We were young 
It was fun and we couldn't lose. Times were right overnight. We were headline news. You know, it's like an autobiography in a way. You know, I, I've said I don't want to do an autobiography like that. I just I like to do it with photos, it's more interesting I do it on record, I make records about my life as a kid in the Beatles. So I don't really want to sit there and write the autobiography you know, day in the life. We all had cameras. We all had camera, a drink and a cigarette. They were the three things we all carried all the time. So if you look through it in those years, the first 62 to 65, you know, we were all, we all went in the same car. We shared two rooms between us, but a lot of the shots are out the window because we couldn't just hang out with people. Even when we went on holiday, two of us went, you know what I mean? We never sort of went on our own. I'd, I'd go with John or I'd go with Paul or, you know, George and I would go to the South of France. It was like we... We were always together. This one of Paul and I, it's on the timer, of course. It's just so great because we're like waiting for the timer on it, but it looks like we're being naughty or something. And I'm really like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I just love the, our expression in that one. All through our touring career, we shared two rooms. Anybody in any room. And we shared one car. <laughs> we were always in the car together and we shared rooms. That's how you get to know each other in a band, I'll tell you. What are some of your favorite images in the book? Well, there's a lot of those Beatle images that I caught, captured, and also the most exciting was the shots out the car. Finally, we meet again. The photo was, I have to find out, that they uh, stayed off school and came to see us land for the first, you know, first time the Beatles came to us. America to the airport and then followed us, our motorcade, into town, into New York. And uh, they came alongside, and the, as you can see in the picture, they're all like looking. And I just happened to like to take photos, and I just, oh, I'll take a photo. Hi, thanks for uh, taking such a wonderful picture. Hey, you're a gifted yeah. photographer. If you wouldn't have been so nosy and hustling, <laughs> <laughs> you guys were just so great, you know, and oh, it was well yeah. worth Staying off school. Hey, yeah. 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 You're the one who lives in LA. What's that? Oh. Are you the one that lives in LA? <laughs> no, you know my California. This is the book, and you are part of it, and I thank you for that. And who knew? It's a hundred years later we put it in the room. So there's a book for each of you here. Oh, oh you're done. Oh, oh, you made thank a good you so much. You know, when I did this, it took four and a half seconds. <laughs> and now I feel like I'm living with them. <laughs> <laughs> that photo became much bigger than I thought it was. I mean, I just put it in the book because it's a great shot. And then suddenly, we, you know, in America, everyone was trying to find them. And they did. Here today, not alone with my memory. Life is strange, how things change, it's reality. You played a beautiful melody that keeps on haunting me. I can always feel you by my side. This is very livable. We're in a big fancy hotel in Paris. And George is washing his hands of face. We used to just tuck our shirts and do it like that. <laughs> well, now you shower, you know what I mean? It was like, you know, it just, that's how you wash. It hit us actually when we arrived in America and we had the single was number one. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Murray the K and Cousin Bruce. And we did a press conference and they all shouted at us. And we shouted back the New York way. And I, we found out later that's why they loved us. Because the press actually were coming to bury us because we shouted back wow. but we landed with a number one it couldn't get any better you couldn't plan it six months later you'll have a number one in in america we had had nothing 
Nothing at all. then. I know all things must pass. And only love will last. I'll always love the memory of you and me. Take me where My late father um, founded the company in the mid 70s. And he wanted to start a company that he was kind of working in the world of mass market publishing and he wanted to start an independent private publishing house uh, where more time was spent on every book. And he was inspired by um, the uh, private press, the, the traditions of the private press in Britain. And, um, and one of the most important books published in 1981 was uh, I Me mean Mine with George Harrison, which presented a first person uh, narrative in this very traditional bookbinding style, which was really, really innovative and creative for the time. Very um, original way of presenting a book like that. I picked up Hammer on the road, and, and uh, actually all four of us in our group, the Modern Folk Quartet, picked up cameras and we photographed each other. When we got home, it turned out to be slide film, so we had a big slideshow. And when I saw the first picture on the wall, huge, I thought, wow, I've got I've to take more pictures so we can have more slideshows, because this is fun. And so, I, you know, I, all day long, I was hanging out with my musician friends and their ladies and whoever else was around. I'd just shoot pictures of everybody, and then on the weekend, I'd show those pictures to those people. And I, and I, I loved it when they said, oh, I didn't, even know you I didn't even know you took that picture. You know, that was, the, that was what I was after. And then when I started getting calls to shoot other friends of mine who lived in Laurel Canyon and were, were needed pictures for publicity, and, album covers, I did, just did the same thing. Just, I was just shooting my friends the whole time, which, which is the same thing Ringo did, yeah. You've never taken a photography course in your life, right? No, nor a drum course. <laughs> <laughs> it starts when I was a kid, where I came from, of course, the Beatle years, the All-Star years, you know, life years after that. So, you know, it starts when I was a baby, and it ends with the first All-Star Band, and that was 1989, and I'm still putting an All-Star Band together, and I'm still playing, so it's, it's good news. first pictures on a camera I had were the ones on the beach, uh, the sand dunes, just outside of Liverpool. I mean, I didn't take that picture, of course, but if it was on my camera, I just claim credit. Literally, from day one, all I've done in my playing is, is pay tribute to and, and rip off Ringo Starr, so... Well, I mean, I could sit here and talk all day about how the Beatles influenced me and how much of an influence Ringo's been uh, my drumming or in my life. When Ticket to Ride kicked in, I started air drumming, which I, I'd never even seen anyone do before. And I, so I, maybe I'm the first, I don't know. But I started air drumming to that song. And when it ended, I went back and I, I didn't get to the next one. I just kept playing Ticket to Ride. And... Uh, and then I worked through those three records. And over the next couple of years, I completed the catalog, which on a 25 cent a week allowance, that's not an you know, easy trick, trust me. I was pretty focused. But I air drummed to those records over and over and over, played those songs way more than you did. I guarantee you that. And, uh, and it just stamped in me, you know, there's like Dave said, there's a it, it, it got into my DNA, there's, there's the, 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 those records, the Beatles records, and specifically the drumming is a part of me that no other music could ever compete with. When I listen to a drummer, it's almost like listening to them speak. I think that their, their drumming should show their sense of humor and their sense of compassion, because it's all in your hands, you know, it's in your heart and your hands, so, uh, so nobody I have, nobody plays drums like Ringo because it's Ringo. And I had this conversation with Keltner one time where we sat and we talked about your drumming. And Keltner, who, you know, obviously is one of the greatest drummers of all time, he was like, man, I've tried. He's like, I've tried so hard. I've tried to do what he does and I just can't do it. And I think it's honestly because Nobody can do it because he's the only one. He's, that's the way it is. Some of you may not know Jim Keltner, uh, who Dave spoke about. He's my favorite drummer, and as he said, he's his. Anyway, he wrote uh, 
he was interviewed and he said, Charlie Watts is the best rock drummer in the world. So I called him. Are you what? Charlie Watts is the best rock drummer? And he said, ah, oh, but ring, you swing. <laughs> you know, there's been so many books on the Beatles, but, but, but none sort of from the inside like this, you know. And I mean, I learned so many things, you know. I mean, in there is a list that Brian uh, Epstein sent the boys, you know, listing all the shows that week. And he'd say, now get, get there early and make sure you're dressed well. <laughs> And, you know, give them a good show because this is an important crowd. And Oh, oh my God, that, that's, that's so great. And I learned who Mal Evans really was and who Neil Aspinall. I've heard, you know, heard those, those names for years, but never really knew exactly what it was they did. You know, and so, so that was uh, very uh, elucidating. And uh, for Beatle fans or just uh, any kind of fans, uh, you know, any just regular people would love this book. So you should all get one. Every time I